Meet two early years advisors with a passion and a purpose to take the learning to the children and to make the learning fun. Well, when you go into a setting for the first time to, to introduce a puppet, it's, it's quite a good idea to have um, a puppet that you feel comfortable with. Because um, otherwise, um, if you are trying to animate or work with a puppet that you're not used to, that, that's quite difficult. Part of Sue and Sheila's role as advisors is to visit early year settings to work with the staff. At St John's First School, Sue and Sheila are familiar faces. I bet you're wondering why you're in a circle, though. We're often in a circle, aren't we? You know, this morning I got up, and what, can you remember what I said I sometimes have to do before I come to school? Have to run out in the garden, don't I? Yeah. The children are waiting to meet a special visitor. So I'm back in the house. Sheila's brought in her own puppet, Bill, to introduce a new friend oh, to the Sheila. children. And she said, could she pop in and see yes. us? So I said she could. Would you like that? Yes! Oh, she's here! You've got to smile. Because if you haven't got a smile, I get enormous butterflies in my tummy. And so does Bill. So you've got to smile. Oh, that's better. Oh, I feel better now. Hello, everybody. Hello. This is Bill. So you say hello to Bill. To start with, we would always have male puppets for the children because some of the boys. Um, can think that they're dolls to start with. Thank you very much. You'd always make sure when you were beginning with a puppet with a group of children that the adults felt comfortable with the puppet because it's, um, it becomes an extension of you as you animate it. So it's really important that um, you feel comfortable with it. We often say to adults, sit in front of a mirror with the puppet to start with, and they often feel very silly, mm. but we think that's important. Mm, yeah. But when we take it into a group of, of children, we don't animate the puppet too much to start with because they can threaten children just reaching out with a hand. can be quite threatening when you've thought that it's a, a lifeless doll and suddenly it comes to life because most people, most adults, not just children, but most adults will think that the puppet has life as soon as you start to, to animate it. And Bill has got a cold today and he keeps doing that. You don't do that, do you? No. So if you see him do that, you've got to tell me and then he'll get his handkerchief out and go, are you sniffing again? Do you sniff sometimes? No. I bet your mum tells you not to. Put it back in your pocket then. That's it. We've got a special treat for you today. Well, I hope it's a special treat. But Bill's got a very good friend, a very good friend called Bernard. And Bernard's been staying with us for a while. Well, they've been playing up so much because Bernard wanted to come and be with a class of children. And Mrs. Morell said he could come yes, here. Yes, we, we haven't got a Bernard. So we'd quite like, got a Bernard we'd like to look class. after Bernard, wouldn't we? So Bernard is going to come and stay with you if you'll have him. Will you have him? Yeah. You don't know, you haven't seen him yet. <laughs> Sam would. Come on, Sam, take the head off. <gasps> oh. Oh. Who is it? Oh, it's oh. Bernard, look. And Bernard, do you think, have a look at them. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you'd like to live here, Bernard? Oh, I, th I think he would. So, Bill has been packing him a special little bag to come here. Shall we see what he's got in his bag? Yeah. I also think if you don't um, give the children time to identify with the puppet, you can threaten them very easily. Because, as I said, when, when, they st when it starts to animate, children can be quite frightened. Yeah. And um, if you haven't given them an opportunity to cuddle it, feel it, hold it themselves, mm. they can sometimes feel um, quite threatened. Yeah, a really nice thing to do is to, is to use your puppet, put your puppet in the garden perhaps, take some photographs of the puppet in a situation, and then you can take that photograph in 
and so. you know, oh, look what the puppets, look what so and so's done today. And you can talk around that, can't you? How the puppet felt so to, Yeah, so to put puppets into um, a, a situation that they, the children themselves might find themselves in is really, really useful. What should we hang up? Because it is a bit hot in here, so what should we hang up in his clothes? His coat. His coat. Right. Would you like to take his coat off then, Liberty? I want the bed. I want the bed. They got it off? Nearly. Right. I'm And... Daniel, would you like to go with Nathan then? And then children can often take a new puppet that's been introduced into their setting uh, to have a look where their peg is, to have a look where the toilets are. All the things that could be worries for themselves, they will then put onto the puppet and be able to um, show the puppet uh, bits of their life, which I think is, again, it's lovely. Good boy. Oh, well done. So when we bring him in after play, make sure he looks for his name. And if he doesn't know his name, what picture have you got to look for? The red train. The red train, right. Come on then. You can use a puppet in so many different ways. And uh, if, if, for instance, you have one that that's, doesn't have a friend today, you know, and you can sort of set a scenario around and the puppet is the central character. And often you're talking about the pup puppet, but the children relate the, the whole scenario to themselves. So if you're saying, oh, you know, um, so-and-so hasn't got a friend today and I wonder how, how you're feeling. And often the children will tell how they feel uh, when they haven't got a friend. And I think in that situation it can be used in a really, really powerful way. Are you all ready? Different puppets can be used for different reasons. At St John's, Colin the Cow helps the children with their numeracy. No, I don't think he wants to speak to you very much today. Maybe he's too tired. Well, he's had a good long sleep. Yeah, they, they can count. Can you count? No. He says he's learning. Do you think you could show him how you count all yeah. the way up to ten? One, two. Most children can engage with puppets. Um, usually they don't feel threatened by them. And many of our puppets can, the children can teach the puppets something. And there's always a puppet that knows less than a child. And so most children are put in the teaching situation. And I think that's a, a really good idea. Can you remember how to play numbers in your head? Yeah. yeah. So can you close your eyes then? Can you stand up and close your eyes? Close them. Put your hands over. And I'm thinking of the number. of eyes you've got. So can you open your eyes and then think how many you've got? How many did he say? Six. He said six. Is he right? No! Show him with your fingers how many eyes you've got. I think they respond to puppets, A, because they're not threatened and because they can bring them to life when they oh, want to bring them to right life. The um, face, they can treat them as a doll which some of them do to start with, but then they can animate them when they feel confident with them. I think that's important. And they feel that they have control over them, don't they? Yes, yes. And I think that sometimes is the key. They feel that they they have control. They're the one they're the ones that are that are controlling something else. And that's yes. the beauty of a puppet really. And the, there's such a variety of puppets that children can relate to the puppet that they feel comfortable with. So we were advised to only have male puppets at the very beginning because that's uh, the way to engage boys particularly. And boys will then talk with the puppet because we know how important it is for boys to talk, to learn. What does Colin think it is, Thomas? Two. 
too. Hmm. What does he think it is now? Three. Right, I is he right? Yeah. He is right. Right. He's Could. clapping because he got his Could right. Time. He's clapping again. Give him another clap then, but clap your shoulders. Clap your shoulders. Children who will not talk about themselves, perhaps within a circle, will often talk to a puppet. Or they yes. will often say, I think the puppet's feeling, you know, and, and, and you can bring out their feelings that way. Shy children often will have used puppets, yes, won't well, they? We've known on lots of occasions when children won't talk to an adult. But my goodness me, you can't stop them talking to the puppet. I know Longwood. The little hermit crab is really useful to use with children who are very, very quiet because the hermit crab will only appear when they start to talk. And they've got to keep talking in order for the hermit crab to come out. If they stop talking, the hermit crab goes back. So it's really good to encourage quiet children to talk. It's a deeply re emotional relationship some children can have with a puppet. They will um, tell the puppet something that they won't tell any other adult. And when they're feeling a bit down or miserable, you'll find them going there hugging the puppet. And also, they want to make sure that the puppet is comfortable, the puppet, the puppet has enough to eat, the puppet has somewhere to sleep. It is an emotional, caring relationship. And sometimes the, the only person that that child will be caring for, because usually they're in the cared-for situation. Hey, <laughs> Look at mine. Mine's Bob. If you haven't used puppets before, I just encourage people to, to slap one on your hand and and just have a go. It is something you need to do um, on your own to start with. Um, and then possibly to have a friend who's also got a puppet and to work like that, because it's really important that the puppet feels part of you, that you, you feel comfortable mm. with it. And it can be it? any kind of puppet, can't Absolutely. it? Absolutely, there be, are loads Or of even just here. sock puppets. Yes, you know, sometimes you just a couple a of socks. Of, yeah, and there are so many kinds of puppets these days, and some of them are absolutely brilliant. I mean, just, just these, these, these kind of little animal puppets. And if you're telling a story that's got a hedgehog in it, yes. why not, you know, use a hedgehog puppet? And, uh, and it just adds to that story. Oh, are these his welcome cards? Oh, thank you. Made him another card. You made him chip, and you? Sometimes there are noisy children in a class who can interrupt in the same way that the parrot is. And the, par the parrot can show the children just how annoying they can be. <laughs> <laughs> this little fella's just been made with two clothes pegs and a sock. It's amazing what you can do with a sock. <laughs>